Welcome to Christ Life Ministries. People see my wife and I say, ah, you look as if you are in your 50s. I, 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 we, we looked at something that was Pastor Wally who was telling me, I think, you know, when we're doing the programs for, you know, my birthday and all of those things, you know, if you look at our pictures when we were 50, we look younger now when we were 60 than the pictures of when we were 50. Why? The life of God is in operation. I'm going to look younger in 10 years' time than I'm looking now. I certainly intend to. By the grace and the mercy of God. I yet not I, but the grace of God which is with me. It's all a question of, as a man thinking, what, what, what do you believe? According to your faith, so be it unto you. So then, what is God's definition of long life? Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Excuse me. Genesis. Where are you? Thank you. And we're just going to look at, I think it's verse 3 or verse 4. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to the King James now. Go back to the King James. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, that he also is flesh, excuse me. Yet his days shall be what? 120 years. And then you see Moses that typifies, it was Kelly Werner in his book, you know, uh, says that God has a son every 2,000 years. Remember that? I remember, remember that revelation. You understand? Moses, after 2,000 years from um, the fall. Then Jesus, 2,000 years after Moses. Then now we, 2,000 years after Jesus, he now has the man child. Give yourself a clap offering, somebody. So following that pattern, Moses said, you know, the Bible says of Moses, he said, and he lived to 120 years. Watch this. His natural strength was not abated. And his eye was not dim. I'll tell you the reason why Moses was like that. Moses had the life of God operating on his flesh. He goes to the presence of God. He doesn't eat or drink water for 40 days. That's supernatural. You can't do that in the natural. Because he was in the Shekinah presence of God. When he came down from the mountain, his face was shining. That the children of Israel could not look on his face. So he had to put a veil there. No wonder why the man at 120 did not have his natural strength abated. I'll tell you another thing I never thought of. It was when I took Joshua Luby to uh, Fork Union in America. You know, he, he had done so well. He had four A's, you know. So I just said, look, one year of military exposure will be good for him, you know, for him to just, you know. Uh, um, and it's really helped him. Even in his CV, it always helps him, you know, when they see he has... Uh, he's a cadet. If, if you and Joshua go to America and you're on the queue and they see that he has military, they'll just bypass you and they give him special. <laughs> yes. Oh, but they, they treat the military so well. The same thing with William. Once you are a veteran or your military, they will give you another line. You don't line with the normal human beings. So, one of his instructors, lovely guy, Christian, black guy, he was telling me about Moses. He said, Pastor, have you ever thought about this? An 80-year-old man carrying, Pastor Brigger, two heavy stones on which God had written the Ten Commandments. You climb up. Have you? Pastor Wale, uh, no, Pastor Larry, and who else was with us? Pastor Andrew, did you go with us? When we went to Boma Hills in 2000, and we had to climb this hill, you know, in um, Adamawa State, you know, and then we crossed over into Cameroon on our, one of our missionary trips where we saw people who were wearing leaves, you know? And some of the pastors, I can't remember who, who, went, who else went with us on that trip. I know Wale did, but Wale was sick, so we left him downstairs. <laughs> you know, but Larry... And I and, 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 and some other brethren, Elvon was there. 
Everyone was recording everything. You know, we climb. It took us four hours climbing up the mountain. And we had ropes tied to each other so that if you stop feeling somebody wondering where he is. It's a true story. I was 40 years old then. It was 1999. I was 41, 42, something like that. You know? Anyway, the, 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 the thing from that story is that I know what it is to climb a mountain. 80-year-old man carrying two stones. Ah, the man had to have, he was, he was fit. He did it twice. You know why? When he came down and they were watching the golden cup, Moses was so angry. He, he threw it down and the, and the thing was destroyed. So God said, I wrote, I hewed the first one out for you. This one you will hew yourself. So he come back up the mountain. Then he had to take instruments to hew the stone out. Then when he hewed the stone out, God now used his laser beam, the power of God that came from his hand, to write the Ten Commandments on the two new huge stones. Then Moses had to take the two of them and climb down back. Give Moses a super clap offering, somebody. I'm about to shock you. Shock you into reality. And that was Old Testament. There's no reason why we shouldn't have people like Moses in the New Testament. Even better. Ah, I'm going to share a secret with you. I didn't plan to, but I've been primed, primed to. I haven't made this public, what I'm about to say. I prayed for myself privately. But I'm going to tell you, and when God tells me to, I'll make it you know, public. In other words, I will update our, our, our prayers. You know that prayer that we pray every day for the fullness of God? That Christ would dwell in our hearts by faith, that become more rooted and grounded in love, you know, in our wills, that, you know, we'll be able to comprehend with all saints in our minds what is the breadth, length, depth, and height of the body of Christ, you know, that we might know in our emotions the love of Christ is greater than knowledge, like Christ showed the Samaritan woman, in spite of his knowledge of her sins, that we might be filled with all the fullness of God is where it stops for you. But let me tell you where it goes for me, that I might be filled with all the fullness of God, that the life of God, will be made manifest in my mortal flesh. I pray this every day. Empowering, consistent, instant healing of the sick, cleansing of lepers, raising the dead, casting out devils, incredible photographic memory, language learning ability, artistic ability, musical ability. That, uh, I'm trying to remember the part, ha. Huh? You know, mathematical ability so that I will consistently, for consistent physical, intellectual, political, economic, and environmental miracles. But I'm not done yet. All this I was taught by the Holy Spirit. Like and better. That was shown in Joseph, in Moses, in Elisha, in Esther, in Mordecai, and in Daniel. And I expect that prayer to be completely answered. Why better? Because we're under a better testament established upon better promises. Like and better than shown. Those ones were given to us as examples in the Old Testament. Now he said it's a better testament. So I'm I'm taking God at his word. Political, physical, healing the sick, raising the dead. That's a small part of it. It's not small, but it's an important part. You know, the intellectual miracles like you see in, in, in Daniel. Political miracles like you see in Esther and Mordecai. Economic miracles like you see in Joseph. Environmental miracles like you see in Elisha, you see in Moses. All that is coming to pass before Jesus comes. That is where we're going. And don't believe for anything less. So, that is God's definition of long life. Now, 
So long life is 120. You know, and it's, it's not even a limit. It's just an idea. Yeah, yeah, it depends on you, you know. It depends on what you, you are satisfied with. Job lived to 140. You know? So, but let's just keep it simple and leave it at 120. You know? And Jesus is coming soon anyway. I don't think any of us need to live up to 120. But you know, it depends on how old you are now. And what you want to believe God for. Why long life? Why this great amount of time? To give us time to be satisfied that we have finished our course. Once you have finished your course, you and God can choose where, when, and how you die. Second Timothy, because of time, you know, and 4, 6, where says, Paul said, I've, I've run the race, I've finished my course. Then in Philippians, you know, that was earlier on. That was, the second, Timothy was later on. But earlier on in Philippians, Paul said, ah, you know, I'm in a strait between two. I don't know whether I should die and go to be with the Lord, which is far better. He said, but to stay in the flesh is more needful for you. So he stayed in the flesh for a little more years and wrote, thank God, give Paul another super clap offering. Thank God he wrote those epistles for us. If he had died, we won't have, we won't have, we won't have some of those epistles. Then when he finished all the epistles, including Hebrews, he now wrote Timothy and said, the, the time of my offering is at hand. It wasn't Nero that killed Paul. It was Paul who allowed him to die the death of a martyr to give, to give courage to the other saints who are undergoing super great persecution. So if Paul did it, then I can do it. You know, because Paul was so revered. In the church. That <clears throat> a crown of righteousness is laid up for me. I've finished my course. I've run the race. I've kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Which the Lord will give unto me. And not to me only. Paul was such an honest man. Not unto me only. But also unto all those who love, who love him and serve him. So what am I saying? That is God's. That, like I said at the beginning, to be generous, the, our understanding before was not wrong, it's just incomplete. This, what I've given you now is complete understanding about what long life is. Now, the reason why we need to have long life is that the major part of your destiny is usually fulfilled in the latter part of your life. Why? Because it takes time to grow, to get the wisdom, the power, and the prosperity. To fulfill the fullness of your destiny. I'm going to repeat that. The reason why long life is important is that the major parts of our destinies are usually fulfilled. The only exception is probably Joseph. Because Joseph finished very quickly. By the time Joseph was 44, 45, he had, well, he hadn't really finished, but he had fulfilled most of it because he brought his dad back. Joseph's destiny was to save the nation of Israel and the other nations from the famine that would have finished. The famine would have killed the entire family. So God sent Joseph ahead to uh, Egypt to preserve Egypt and the nations around and including his family, bring his family from Canaan to Egypt. They came into Egypt as a family. They left as a nation. Give the Lord a clap offering. The destiny, watch this. The destiny of the nation of Israel was inside the family of Jacob. Including the Messiah. That is why Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. What would have happened if Judah died? your neighbor say God knows what he's doing that's why watch this even though Joseph brought them in at 44 he still had to be around to look after them in a foreign land 
Those Egyptians are very unstable. <laughs> so long as Joseph was alive, you understand, they respected and revered Joseph and they would not touch his brothers. Had Joseph died at 60, God forbid, or something like that, and he was no longer there, they probably would not accord to the family the same uh, love and kindness and hospitality that they showed them. It was Joseph's presence. So even though Joseph had brought them it at 44, he still had to live all of those years to make sure that the, the, that, that generation fulfilled its destiny. They died and their children. <laughs> and by that time, they were established as a nation in, in, in Egypt. Turn to neighbor and say, God knows what he's doing. Long life has its, it has its great, great, great significance. Look at my mother, who by the grace of God just died. Died at 94. And as I thinking back, and thanking God, the Yorubas have a wonderful saying, Entoba monuro, amokweda. When my mother was 80, in 20, uh, it was 2008. It was 2008. That was when the armed robbers came to my house. Me and my wife put a gun to her head like this. What if I had died? What happened to my mom? We couldn't celebrate her 80th birthday that time because of that incident. Long life is very important. Those extra years gave me time to be able to talk to her, get her born again. I just use that as an example. So it is crucial to live long. The greater part of your destiny is usually fulfilling the latter part of your life. And I'm going to use two examples. The first one is Jesus. Jesus, the major part of Jesus' prophetic destiny was fulfilled in those three years. Everything between zero and 30. Only a few things were fulfilled. He was born of a virgin. That one was fulfilled. You know, uh, he had more understanding than his teachers. Some of the things that are in the prophetic scriptures. But the very important ones were not fulfilled until when he was 30. 30 to 33. Then the last 24 hours was even more important. That's when he fulfilled all the scriptures in Isaiah. You know, uh, you know uh, he, he had borne our sicknesses. He had carried our disease. All that was on the cross. That was why Jesus was very careful when he was here. See, Jesus was not like many of us. He was not presumptuous. The Bible says, and when he knew they tried to kill him, he walked no longer in Judea. Why? A prophet must not perish outside Jerusalem. To fulfill the prophetic scriptures, he had to die in Jerusalem. He had to die on a cross. Or Psalm 22 cannot be fulfilled. They will not have pierced his hands and his feet. Are you listening to me? That's why you need to know the Bible. You need to know what God has said about you. So you need to know where you should be to fulfill your destiny. Am I talking to anybody here? You're still on my side. Give me another wave offering. And then the Lord will clap offering. I'm soon going to be done. I can see some people still, you know. God will have mercy on you. The second person, of course, is Moses. The Moses we know today is the Moses of the last 40 years. If Moses had died at 80, we would have said that the man lived a good life. Let me say it in Yoruba so I will you know, get your thinking and I'll translate to English. Ah. And he did. Those years in, in, in media, in Jethro, he married. He had two sons. He had a flock. He had a good life. If in this life only, we have hope in Christ Jesus. We are of all men most miserable. This Christianity is not about material possessions. Unbelievers that go to hell, marry, they have children, 
they built houses, they have fine cars, but that is not destiny. And stop thinking like that. Most Christians think like that. Ah, Moiti Kole. That's I've not yet built a house. Moiti uh, Ramoto. I've not bought a car. Then Konshodnari Jeep, Jeep, Jeep. As if Jeep is inside the Bible for destiny. Allah Hamma Shanuwao. Our thinking is so warped. And I don't have a Jeep. You know, I have Jeeps. But that's not my destiny. Those are just the byproducts of my following God. Because God delights in the prosperity of his servant. So you will get the Jeep. But you see, the Jeep is not your destiny. And once the Jeep starts disturbing, good morning, Jesus. <laughs> I just use that as an example. That's what happens. When people prosper materially, their consecration to God diminishes. You can check it in the scriptures. And when King Uzziah became strong, his heart was lifted up. It's an it's a intrinsic part of the satanic nature. And if you don't get rid of the satanic nature in your soul, it will happen. You will say, oh, no, I can never do that. I remember, remember Jehu. It was God who raised Jehu up. Jehu killed Jezebel. Jehu killed the prophets of Baal. But Jehu served Baal more than them. When he became strong. That's why God told him, when you get a king, this book will not depart. Because the only thing that will keep his heart. Look at Solomon. It's, it's a, you know, even David. Thank God David repented and came back. And because David kept the word of God in his heart. And God had mercy on him and helped him. There's something. What would make a whole King David? The sweet psalmist of Israel. The author of the book of Psalms. See a small girl, maybe in her late teens or early 20s, who is old enough to be her grandfather and not be able to take his eye away. I preached it many times. You know, David didn't think of murder. Mm -mm. He just wanted to have fun. Ah, fine girl. You know, I'll just have fun with her for one night. I'll send her back to her husband. He had no intention of marrying her. Or, no, 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 no. Killing Uzziah, no, no. You know, but you have to ask the question, what made him think he could do it? I am king. I am king. I have the power. I have the influence. Of course, he boomeranged and cost him more than he could ever think. But you, the, the point I'm making is this. Material prosperity without the corresponding spiritual prosperity will lead to ruin. Write it down. It's an unfailing truth. That is why in this fulfillment of destiny thing, God usually, you, you prosper, you give you food and raiment. But most times he will not give you the big thing until when he knows that that work has been done in your heart then he will now give you this mega prosperity with which you can fulfill your destiny. That's why you have to live long. When I look at the, myself now, I'm 63 by the grace and the mercy of God. I am, by the grace of God, more mature now. I have better understanding, you know. If I had had something, if I had when I was 40, I probably would have misbehaved. I was prosperous at 40, but not like this. I couldn't handle it. Mm. May God have mercy on us. Don't worry, I'm closing soon. Now, how do you guarantee long life? Before I answer those questions, everybody quote me to the book of Proverbs. 
There are so many scriptures there. I'm going to take a few of them, not all of them. Look at Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 1 and 2. My son, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For what? Length of days and long life and peace. Shall they what? It means it wasn't there before. It had to be added. This is a great truth. You have to understand that there is no such thing as a Oluwani. And that God has specified a number of days for you. No. What you do or do not do can either add or subtract. I'm going to show you some more scripture. You know? Now, Proverbs chapter 2. Look at verse 16. With, uh, sorry, this is uh, Psalm, Psalm 91 verse 16, which we're going to come back to. No, not that one. Look at uh, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 10. O oh, my son, receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Understand is conditional. Oh, my son. Everybody open your mouth. And receive my sayings. And the years of your life shall be many. Turn to your neighbor and say, if you don't receive his sayings, the years of your life may not be many. You know, this is the kind of truth they don't like to hear in the church. Everybody wants this, um, this in Jesus' name. You will live long. It's not like that. You will live long in Jesus' name. But these are the conditions. I yet not I. But the grace of God which is me. Thank God you have a good pastor. Who is feeding you with knowledge and understanding. So you will live long. That's why people don't live long. Because they don't read the scriptures. I'm not done yet. I'll give you another one. This is, that, all this is in Proverbs. That's why you should read Proverbs every day. 